Eagles. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Thank you all so much for coming again. Uh, so glad to have you here today at City Church. And uh, before we get going, just a couple of things. Many of you know, we, as I said earlier, we started our 21 days of prayer and fasting last Sunday. We met Wednesday night for a time of prayer. And so today we're kind of going to pick it up in our week two. We're just going to hit a little bit and learn a, bit, a little bit more about prayer. And it's funny because I had a couple of people come up to me before it started and say, can you pray for this? Can you pray for this? And so you've come today, ladies and gentlemen, at the right place at the right time. Because that's exactly what we're going to talk about. This is exactly what everybody needs. I don't care what you're going through because we all are going through something. And we all need prayer. That's for sure. Amen. And so we're going to be hitting on that today and have a special time of prayer at the end. But I just want to start off just saying that we have a lot to be proud of this church. And every year, you know, I just, my heart goes out to teachers that do what they do day in, day out. And I guess it's probably because of, you know, what, what, I, what I deal with at home and what I have, you know, in the workplace and schools and, and, uh, and making schools, you know, be caught up in prayer every day. That's what we do as a family and as a church. But I just wanted to recognize one teacher in particular who got Teacher of the Year for Bennett Middle School. Deanna, can you stand? Deanna Marshall. Uh, and Deanna, I just want to say that, you know, many of us, I did kids ministry. I've told you that for years over at uh, Mandel Salisbury campus. And, and, you know, a lot of times when you do kids ministry, you don't, you take care of everybody's kids while they get fed. And sometimes you feel like, shit, does anybody even know I'm here? You know, and they're always looking for help, knock on wood. So if you take your kids, you need to help, amen, at least once a month. And, uh, and so she does all that during the week and then goes over there and volunteers her time over there and help lead those kids. And so, Deanna, we are proud of you. There's no doubt in our mind that you got it because you deserve it. So thank you, and thank you to all the teachers there. We appreciate all that you do. Today I'll be looking at 1 Timothy 2.1, and then I'm also going to look at Acts 12, 6 through 10. And so we're going to get going this morning. Here we go, 1 Timothy 2.1 says, I urge then, first of all, say first, first of all, that petitions, prayers, intercession, and thanksgiving be made for all people. Now, stop right there, Carl, because I'm going to repeat it again. All right, are you getting this? Talking about prayer, first of all, that means the very first thing. First of all, more than anything else, uh, petitions, Prayers, intercession, coming together, praying over someone, praying for somebody, and then turn around and thanking him. Thanksgiving be made for all people. Then we'll flip to Acts and then start with verse 6 in chapter 12. It says, the night before Herod was to bring him to trial, Peter was sleeping between two soldiers, bound with two chains, and sentries stood guard at the entrance. And suddenly, an angel of the Lord appeared, and a light shone through in that dark cell. And he struck Peter aside the head, and he woke him up. And he said, quick, get up. And he said, and the chains fell off of Peter's wrists. Then the angel said to him, put on your clothes. And while you're at it, get some shoes on your feet, because they be stinking. And then while you're at it, get your clothes on, get, get your little cloak on around you, and follow me. So Peter followed out of the prison, but he had, he had no idea what the angel was doing and what was really happening. He thought he was seeing a vision. And they passed the first and second guards, come on, and came to the iron gate leading to the city. Guess what? It opened for them. Woo, don't you love it when God opens the door? Woo! And opened the door, and they went through it. And when they had walked the length of one street, suddenly the angel left him. I want to talk to you today, and the title of my message is, Our Last Resort. Let's pray this morning. God, we love you. We want you to be our first resort, God. We want you to be everything that we do, everything that we need, God, that we would put you first. And God, we know that we're living in times where it is just so demanding schedules and different things that we have going on. But, Lord, we don't want to do anything without putting you first. And so, God, if we don't get anything over the next 21 days, but just this, Lord, just knowing that we've got to pray first, God, that that would be our prayer for each other, that that we would encourage one another, take it to the Lord in prayer, that prayer is the greatest weapon and and that we have to fight the battles that we go through. In Jesus' name, and everybody said, amen. 
Amen. Um, now, I just want to ask permission. I didn't ask permission before I did the sermon, but since my father is here today, Dad, do I have your permission to talk about the trip that we experienced? Go, okay. I don't know what I would have done if he said no. So you won't be offended if I, like, share a little bit about you and me and getting hangry and all that? Okay. So, um, so many of you know, a couple months ago, I told the story about how all three of us went to go pick up Landon. And we're on that New Jersey turnpike, and I was doing it, we were doing it on our own. Michael, Micah, I mean, he could go anywhere, anytime, it won't even bother him. He just drives like it's nothing. But I get anxious. I just take it naturally after people I know. And, and so I get anxious. I always turn before I'm supposed to turn. Anyway, so we went to go get Landon, and Dad's driving. I'm sitting in the front, and uh, we were on New Jersey turnpike, and we were looking. I'll never forget, we are looking for... I think it was uh, 9 West, I don't know. Anyway, we're looking for the street, and I'm, lo- I'm on, the, on there, and I'm texting Mike. I'm like, I'm good. He said, don't talk too soon now. You, there's a tricky part coming up. I'm like, eh. So anyway, we get right up, and I said, Dad, it's right there. And before I could get it out of my mouth, Dad was like in the middle of the lane of the turnpike, just took my car and just swerved over as far as he could, went up over a little rail there and got in there. Well, let's just say fingers were flying, you know what I'm saying? Y'all got it. I knew. It'll take you a while. We're in church. Fingers were flying. People, I mean, it's, ah, you can hear them. And we're just sitting there going, oh, God, please don't hit me. Please don't hit me. So let's just say this time around, when we went, we just went um, Friday, asked Dad. He said, I'll go with you. So we went up, and he said, I'll drive. But you've got to be on it. I said, oh, don't worry, Dad. So I'm looking ahead because I'm anxious. I don't want him to miss his turn. I'm looking ahead. I'm talking to him. He's like me. I want somebody to talk to me. Hey, you have 10 miles where you get here, you know. So I'm talking to him. His dad got directions right here. Yep, just keep going. So let's just say this year, praise God, and this time when we were on New Jersey Turnpike, we, we made that turn. It was a smooth sailing, and everything was great. We get to West Point like an hour early. I said, Dad, I need a coffee. My God, I bet we stopped at every rest area on the way there and got some kind of caffeine, whether it was coffee, Diet Dr. Pepper, Diet Cokes, whatever we could. And so we, we're on our way there. We get there early. I said, Dad, we need to stop and get some coffee. So we we're chilling, we're drinking coffee, we got an hour, hour and a half, actually, before we had to get Landon. So we're just hanging out, and he said, you know what, maybe we should go ahead now and go on in, because you got to go through a gate and guards and all that. So I said, okay. So I said, you got your West Point ID? He said, yep. So we get our West Point IDs out, and they came, and they had a little scanner, and they said, sir, I'm sorry. And he said, what? He said, uh, you're... <laughs> Sorry, you have to be in the moment. I'm trying to get all this into the sermon in a half an hour, but it was great. And he said, I'm sorry, sir. He took a card from him, put it away. He said, uh, your, your card's expired. And uh, I said, was well, mine expired? He said, no, yours is good. And I'm like, oh, Lord. So he said, no problem. You just go out here and make a left, then go out here and make no, you know, all that. And we got to go to the visitor center. So Dad said, oh, Lord, he was just panicked. I said, look, Dad, I've been to the visitor center before. I got you. It's easy. I remember how to get there. So we pull up the visitor center. We go in. I'm calming him down. I'm like, look, he ain't even out of class yet. We got time. We got the whole night. Let's just relax, you know, whatever. So we get in the visitor center. We go downstairs. I go to take a form, and there's no pen. So I'm looking over the counter where no one's sitting trying to get a pen. They're like, excuse me, you can't, you can't lean over the counter. And I'm like, well, you tell us we got to take a ticket to be waiting on, and we can't take a ticket till you fill the form out, and you ain't got no pens. So I told him, I said, don't panic. I'll go out of the car. So I run out of the car, get a pen. Come in. I said, Dad, don't worry about a thing. I'll take care of the form for you. So I fill the form out. We go sit down. We get the visitor's pass. We're rolling now. We go pick Landon up. Everybody gets out, use the bathroom again for the 20th time because we drank so much caffeine on the road. And we get ready to go. And Landon hops in the front seat. Said, I'll take the directions from here. I said, no problem. Put the directions in the phone. Hit go. I said, I'm looking for the fastest route. He said, no problem. So we did it together. I hit it. He got in the front seat. Dad's in the back. So I can't take this anymore. More. I'm stressed out today. He said, hey, we're going to hit all New York City traffic. I ain't into it. You drive. You okay? I said, I'm fine as long as Lane's got the directions. So on our way out, about 5 o'clock, you know, most people, well, our, our family usually eats dinner at 5, 6, sometimes 7, but no later than that for sure. And we get ready to pull out. So now, Lane, if I were you, I'd get, we need to get dinner right here. Mickey D's is right here at the gate before we get on that turnpike. Oh, no, Mom, I'm not hungry. Well, I knew what was going to happen. 
It, well, he says it's been an hour or more, but I don't think so because New York City is about a half hour away from West Point. We were up in New York City, bumper to bumper traffic, and he's saying it's crit- I'm critical, it's, I'm starving, you know. And I'm trying to be patient because well, the boy does day in and day out for the United States of America, and he, you know, in military training. And I'm like, all right, okay, whatever, you know. So I'm trying to be patient. I said, son, I'll get you something to eat, but we got to get through the traffic in New York City. Then we'll look for a rest stop somewhere in one of these visitor centers. Sometimes they have a Popeye. Oh, that sounds good. I said, whatever, we'll stop somewhere. So about another 15 minutes rolled by. He said, mom, I'm hungry. So we stop, and we find a rest stop. And we're like, praise God, because we got to use the bathroom again. And so we pull over, and there's a Chick-fil-A. And he was like, oh, I want Chick-fil-A. But how many of you know, man, Chick-fil-A is nuts, Line wrapped around. I looked at dad. Dad looked at me. He said, I'm just going to take a seat. I said, go sit down. I said, you want something to eat? He said, yeah, my God, I've had six bars a day and had no dinner. I need something. I said, what do you want? He said, I don't know, just to give me a grilled chicken sandwich. Well, I was trying to be good on the road, which is it's stupid. So I'm like, I'll take grilled chicken in a salad. Let's just say I waited in line with all of them a half an hour, got the grilled chicken, but didn't get no salad, but I ate it anyway. We get in the car, we're rolling, and of course, by then, traffic is terrible. And I'm trying to be patient, laying in the front seat. But I, learned, I noticed that after Landon ate, he got quiet. And I noticed he was starting to doze off a little bit. And I'm like, okay, okay. So I'm looking down at his lap where the phone was sitting so I could, you know, and so I'm just kind of keeping an eye on them, and I'm like, okay, New Jersey Turnpike. How many of you been on I mean, I knew I'm going to be on that forever, you know? So I'm like, okay, I got time. And this is what, this is what kept, caught, caught me off guard. All of a sudden, the phone says, okay, to turn exit six. I looked up, exit six was there, and it said Philadelphia something turnpike there. So I just went to go that way, and Dad said, what are you doing? I said, Dad, it says it right on the phone. And the time is the same. We're going to get there at the same time. He's like, Dana, and, and bless his heart, he never said a word until we got in Philadelphia. <laughs> so we, we turn and turn pipe, play the toll, and he said, do you realize what, what you just did? I'm like, Dad, it says on the phone, Lance's like, look, it's okay, guys, take a chill pill. Like, I'm just, I mean, I'm just trying to get home. As long as he gets to some, he cares. So I'm just so trying to figure out what, why the phone said that. So I'm like replaying in my mind while I'm driving in Philly, downtown Philly, like, why did it tell me to turn here? Like, it's never done this before. So I'm thinking all these things, and Dad's in the back seat, and I'm worried about him. And granted, we left at 10 a.m. We got back at 1030 at night. So we've been in the car all day, and I'm worried about him. He's worried about me. And then Landon, you know, he don't care. He's going home. What does he care? You know, he's not even looking at the instructions. He's like, well, have I missed a turn yet, Mom? I'm like, no, but I need somebody to talk to me ahead of time. So I noticed while we were going through Philly, after we had already been around New York City, that I was getting a little low on gas. But I didn't want to tell Dad because I didn't want Dad to be stressing out because he was already in the back like, you know. And so I'm like, okay. So I'm trying to, I'm like, okay, we're in Philly. Like, how do I do this without, like, freaking him out right now, you know, because I got to stop. So I'm just trying. I'm like, you know what? I'll just get gas later. It'll be fine. And we're passing all these gas stations. And I'm just like, oh, I'm I'm just, I'll put it off till later. You know, no big deal. There's got to be something. So dad says, son, I'm telling you, the Memorial Bridge should be coming up soon. Now, how much further does it say till we get to the bridge? He was like, I don't know. It says something like 24 minutes or 24 miles or something like that. And he said, Dana, aren't you getting low on gas? I was like, yeah, I was just going to get it after I get off the bridge. He said, Dana, there ain't no place to get it when you get off the bridge. So I was like, okay. So I'm like, oh, no problem, Dad. You know, I've done this before. It's getting a little low. It'll be fine. You know, we got it. So I'm, I'm like trying not to panic, but I just kept pushing it off. And so my last resort was to hit the closest, out in the middle of nowhere, closest gas station I could find. But how many of you know, sometimes it ain't on the right side of the street. You got to take an exit. You got to get to it. Then we're at a stoplight at the exit, waiting. Everybody's starving. Everybody's tall. Everybody got pee, you know. And it was just getting a little tense. And so I, my last resort was a gas station that I had to drive an extra five miles to and was praying, don't let me run out for gas. I pull up, and then they pump the gas for you. So then you had to wait. So I'm like, oh, great, you know. And so, of course, they had to go to the bathroom. We'll see you later. We're going to the bathroom. And the guy's like, how can I help you? I'm like, I don't know. I don't, just give me some gas. No, he's like, ma'am, I need to know what kind of gas. I'm like, oh, sorry. I ain't never done this before. Uh, just throw on, on lead. It's fine, man. I appreciate it. Let's just say because I made it the last resort, 
And because I pushed it off for so long, I ended up paying more money for the gas and more time had been wasted on top of all the other stress that was going on. If I had just took the time and got the gas first like I was supposed to and not made it the last resort, come on, I would have been fine. But you know, man, don't we do that in our prayer life? Man, we do it, don't we? We don't intentionally do it, but it's like me. I was so overwhelmed. What, what went wrong and what I was looking at the present moment in your life sometimes, you mean well. God bless your soul. Tap yourself on the shoulder. You mean well, but you're so looking at everything going on. You're looking at the problem. You're looking at the storms you're going through, and you're like, oh, but if I could just do that, and I wonder why this didn't work out this way, but I could fix this by doing this, and then we're all up in it, but you know what our last resort? then is after we've done all we know how to do pray so what would happen if we instead of making prayer our last resort we start making prayer our first response what would happen if we became a church right they didn't talk about well praise god be glad if we fill up this this service and we fill up this and we do this what if we start praying first before we start talking about it what if we get a phone call and something happens and we get a doctor's report but then still instead of sitting there and complaining about it what if we just simply get on our knees and begin to pray people walk around all the time well pastor i don't understand why this isn't working out. I don't understand why that's not working out. And I want to come out, grab them by the hands and put my hand, or grab them by the face or whatever and say, have you prayed? Oh, yeah, yeah, I prayed. Like, you know, a couple months ago I prayed. I prayed for that. No, no, no. Pray first. Pray first. You're going to buy a car? You think, oh, I got the money for a car? Pray first. You send in your kid to school for the day, and you think, oh, they got friends. They ain't got nothing going on. Pray first. You put your husband out the door to go to work, pray first. You go out of work, pray first. You pull up to work. Come on. Yeah, that's where the enemy fights. You got to face so-and-so. She's going to be in a mood. And I just, you know, and you got, come on. Y'all do that? Pull up to work. You got to put the whole battle uh, put the full armor. Yep, you're getting ready for battle. Put the armor of God on. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus, come on and pray yourself up something. Pray yourself up in a good spirit and a good attitude. Whatever you got to do, but you got to pray first. Whatever you purchase, whatever you do in life, whatever job you take, whatever issue you have, whatever problem you have, you need to get on your knees and pray. Because I'm going to tell you something, there is power in prayer. And that's what we're lacking now all over society. Everybody, me well and they want to learn and they want to grow and come to church but if you ain't praying what's the point of all of it prayer nights at church should be packed absolutely packed because what it's telling me when it's not is that everything's hunky-dory in our lives and nobody has any problems well if you don't have a problem come see me next week and I'll give you some of mine right everybody's got a problem Everybody needs to be praying about everything, giving thanksgiving, interceding for other people. There's people around you who are hurting. You need to be praying for. Pray for every person you come in contact with, every person when you're riding down the road, every person checking out in a grocery store line. Pray for the clerk. Pray for people. Ask the Lord to open your eyes and your mind and your heart to people all around you who need to know that, they, that you love them, that you took the time for prayer. How many of you like to get a text out of nowhere, somebody just saying, hey, I pray for you today, just checking on you. Man, that is awesome. Been thinking about you, doing okay, been praying for you. Woo, come on. What if we started doing more of that, man? Woo. What if every time I got up here to pray, man, I, I, I mean to preach, I didn't even have to even preach. People laying out praying, man, praying, praying for their family, praying, man, instead of coming in here swole up about pouting about something happening in your family, man, that people just fall. Man, when I say at the end of my message, come forward and pray, man, this, this whole thing would just be full of people, just full. Hey, and those questions for me, just taking it to God because God is waiting for us to talk to him. God is wanting us to pray. So why do we find it so hard? Because the enemy distracts us. 
He doesn't want us to pray. He doesn't want you to pray for your kids and your grandkids. He doesn't want you to get up and have a good attitude about prayer. He does not want that. He wants us to do anything he can by distracting you with kids and, and work stuff and bills and problems and issues and relationships, whatever he can do to get you off of your knees so you won't pray. And you know it's like the gym. You miss one day, come on. Then you miss another day, come on. And you just keep missing. But I want you to just put it first. Put prayer first. Man, even this week, just, just little things you can try, just putting it first. It makes a difference, amen? Because God looks at the heart, right? He looks at the desires of our heart, and he wants to bless us. He's got so many blessings there waiting for us, but he's waiting to see, are we going to talk about it, complain about it, back away from me and your relationship with him, or are you going to pray about it? And so I just encourage you, just keep praying, because God wants to do something awesome. That was just my intro, but don't worry, my... My points are real quick today, which is why I had the long intro. Okay, here we go. So I want to jump in and talk to you a little bit of that something I want you to remember about putting prayer first. The first thing is that God is looking. So let me, let me back up a little bit. We're in Acts chapter 12. But before you can understand where Peter is and before you can understand what's going on with him in the prison, you need to know what's going on even before that. So in Acts chapter 5, old King Herod. Oh, bless his darling heart. Um, king Herod had beheaded John the Baptist. He had crucified Jesus Christ. Come on, that King Herod. Um, he had taken the sword to James. He had uh, done all these things, and he did it to, so that people, he could, he could please people. Basically, he wanted to be the center of attention when everybody would be like, oh, you're so cool, dude. I don't like that person. Okay, go kill them. You know, that kind of thing. And that's what he was doing. And now um, he's got Peter all up in the mix, and he's, he's thrown Peter in prison because he wants to prove everybody, hey, I'm going to please you. I'm going to put this bad boy in prison. Are y'all with me? So Peter is in prison here in chapter 12. Now, he's in prison, and it looks absolutely hopeless. All right, close your eyes for a minute just saying, okay, you're Peter, you're in prison, nobody wants to talk to you, people are like, I ain't talking to him, it's bad news, you're locked away, you got, let's, let's throw some stuff in there, let's throw some, you got some mice running around, come on, you ladies would be screaming at the top of your head, you got some dusty, musty smell going on, and, and, and did I mention it's dark, and so I can just imagine what it would be like to sit in the dark for long periods of time, you're chained up and you're sitting there, I would say that you probably felt like all hope is gone. But the first point I want you to know today, like I said earlier, I'm going to repeat it again, is God is looking. God is looking. When you're in the most dark, terrible, smelly place of your life, and you feel like no one cares, this looks hopeless, come on. I mean, let's be real in church today, man. We don't have to put up no front. I mean, everybody's been there. You feel lonely. You feel isolated. You feel depressed because nobody cares. Nobody's called. Nobody's text, you know, and, and, and nothing's working out for you. And there he was, you know, but God was looking the whole time. And God was looking because God was about to do something miraculous. Oh, oh come on. But in the middle of all that, God was looking at him. God was watching Peter in the most crucial time of his life, in a time where he needed Jesus the most, and something began to happen. A miracle started to take place. Oh, first the light was coming in. Oh, that's enough right there to get somebody fired up today. The light was coming in the dark shell, or dark cell, and in the middle of all that, oh, come on, something else has changed, started to break off, all because God was looking. I want you to know, in that season right now that you're going through, God is looking. He's wondering, have they prayed? He's looking and saying, how are they handling it? Because the miracle is just about to take place. But I'm looking to see how they're going to handle it. Maybe that's what you need to be reminded about today. Maybe you need to be reminded that he's looking because you feel like nobody sees you. Nobody understands you. Just know that God understands you just like he understood Peter. And he began to do something in the darkest moments of his life. Ladies and gentlemen, we live in a society that's filled with a lot of dark things. And people are telling you to give up. Give up on God. Give up on church. Give up on your partner. Give up on your kids. Walk out of it because it's the easy way out. I'm going to tell you something. You fight and you pray for whatever you need to pray for. And you go to it first. That should be your first response. And the next thing I want to let you know, number two, is God is listening. 
God is listening. Verse 6 and 7, it says Peter was miraculously delivered out of prison. Why? Because God's word tells us a few scriptures before that. Because the church was praying. The church was praying. And Peter was in the dark place. And because they were praying without ceasing, meaning they were praying nonstop. They were praying, and the power of their prayers is what caused the miracle in the prison cell for Peter. They were praying for him. Ladies and gentlemen, it's about time, come on, that we start joining together and praying for one another and making prayer the very first thing that we do. Day in and day out that we pray for people, there's power in it. There's power in it. They had enough power in their prayers that they prayed him right on out of prison. Can you imagine if we became a church that prayed so much that there would be so much power in it? And the people we're praying for that are up at Hopkins and all these other places and nursing homes getting ready to die. Oh, but if the church just started praying. Oh, and some of you got, oh, you got all kinds of problems and people in your life are struggling with addiction issues. Oh, come on, let me tell you something. That ain't nothing to God. I'm going to tell you something. You get on your knees, you begin to plead the blood of Jesus and watch him move and watch him work. Oh, I want to be a kind of church. Can I get just get excited? A little city church. Oh, I love it. Oh, we're going to get praying for the city. I'm praying for the police officers. Come on. I'm praying that God will do something on the streets. I'm praying we'll be able to keep church on the street. People will start getting saved and they'll start getting hungry for Jesus. Jesus, and we'll be passing them at the post office. They'll be like, hey, I know you. Aren't you from that church that's for the city? Yes, yeah, city church. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I remember when you prayed for me. Some of you are here because somehow, somewhere, somebody prayed for you. So why do we forget to pray for people all around us? Man, we got people in our family. We need to pray. We need to pray. God's coming back soon. We've got to get them ready. Don't give up on them. Keep praying and keep doing it first before anything else. I got to get back to my message. Let me get up here. I want you to know it doesn't matter what kind of prayers you pray. You can pray short prayers, long prayers, loud prayers, soft prayers. God hears them all. He hears them all. You don't have to be up here. Lord God, I pray. Father God, you know, you don't have to be like that, man. Keep it real. Like you're talking to your friends. Pray like you don't mind talking to them about every problem and everybody going here and people going here and doing it. Hey, why can't you say, hey, I want to pray. Start praying like, like that's your husband, like that's your wife, like you would talk to them. Like, hey, what's up? How was your day? Good morning. Talk to God. God, how you doing, God? Struggling today. Don't be afraid to tell him exactly how you feel. Exactly how you feel. Don't say he already knows, but go ahead and pray anyway. He hears all kinds of prayers. But I want you to know this about prayers, okay? Sometimes prayers are answered quickly. Aren't they awesome? Oh, I love those kinds of prayers. Oh, yeah, it gets me fired up. Like, thank you, God. Let me, let me get back on my knees again, right? We love that. But sometimes prayers are answered with a delay. Come on, some of you, that's where you are now. When I think about Mary and Martha, they were praying for Lazarus, and they, they kept saying, oh, we got to get Jesus here. If Jesus could get here, you know, they got, he's got to hurry up. He's, he's going to die if, he, if Jesus don't get here to heal him. And they were praying Jesus would come and heal him. And God, what did he do? He waited four days before he showed up. After that bad boy had already died and stunk and all that good stuff, he comes walking, and you know why he waited? Because God was answering that prayer in a different kind of way. They were praying for healing, and God was praying for a resurrection. So he waited, he waited before he went in there because he had a different plan. If you're waiting on God, just relax, take a chill pill, drink a cup of coffee. He ain't forgotten about you. He's got something different for you. He's got a different plan. You ain't going to understand it, but when it happens, you're just going to know that it was God. It ain't you. It ain't in your little memo. It ain't in your bulletin points in your journal. It is God and God himself. So just hold back, take a chill pill, and keep getting on your knees because God, it's going to get worse before it gets better. But you got to keep praying and keep trusting God. God, that something is going to happen. Keep praying. Doesn't matter how you pray, but just keep praying. Another thing I want you to know, sometimes God has a different answer to our prayer, right? Different way. I talked about that, different way. But then sometimes he says no. Sometimes he says no. 
because his timing is better than our timing. And so we have to understand when he says no, don't you drift away from him because he says no. He has something greater in store. And I look back and prayers I prayed, man, I'm glad God never answered those prayers. Right? We don't see it at the time, but know that God is doing it for a reason. There's something there. He has something better in mind. And the last thing I want you to know today is God is leading. When you are praying, God is working. People were praying for Peter. And all of a sudden, not only did the light come in, not only did the chains come off all of a sudden. Oh, but I love this part. Are y'all ready? I love this part. But an angel of the Lord came. See, Peter, that was a miracle in itself. Like that, that, this the light and the chains, but that wasn't enough because God was going to do it his way. You know what I'm saying? And so God's like, how can I make this story a little better? So what God did is, is he, he sent an angel to say, hey, Peter, God's doing it, but you got to do something. You can't sit there and lay and say, oh, wow, God did this. This is cool. You got to put your part in. You got to do something. So the angel came, smacked him inside the head and said, get up. Get up. For some of you, maybe it's just getting up. Maybe it's just getting up today. Hey, I got a new word for you. Oh, this has been good for me. 2023, I'm going into it with a bang. Are you ready? You get, hey, some of you have been sitting there a long time. You've been mourning, but the, God told me, hey, you got a morning move. It's okay to mourn. Give yourself about 24 hours, you know, get it out of your system, and then you got to keep moving. You got to keep moving. So, so, so the angel said, Peter, get up. Get up. Let's go. And Peter looked down. He said, oh, no. Get your shoes on. Grab your coat. It's a little chilly there, Peter. And let's go. So Peter was showing a sign of obedience to the angel and did what he told him to do. But God wasn't done yet. So they go running out. Can you imagine? He's getting his coat on. He's like, hold up. I'll be right there. And they're walking. And then all of a sudden, just about on their way out, they approach a gate. See, right before your greatest breakthrough. Woo! Come on, somebody. Come on, talk to me. Talk to me. I get it. Come on. Right before your greatest miracle, your greatest blessing, right after you've been tired, shoot, God, are you going to come through or not? Right after you're like grumpy because you're going off on everybody because you're just about miserable and you're right about there and you see that gate. Some of you have been looking at a gate. And you're like, I don't know how much more I could take. I'm just about there. But then something else happens, and there's a, there's a gate there. Chains have been off, and now there's a gate. And you know what I want you to know? I can't do nothing about it. You can't do nothing about that gate, but God can. God can. You keep praying, and they kept praying. And anyway, let's just say when they got to the iron gate, it opened by itself. Why? Because people were praying. People were praying. Y'all ready? I got one other cool story. Ezra, chapter 9, verse 3. Okay, we ain't going there, but I'm just going to tell you about it. All right, Ezra, prophet, come on, Old Testament. Y'all with me now? Okay. So Ezra, in, in this passage, um, I was reading this week, and I'm like, oh, this is so good. But he was so frustrated by what was going on in that time that he wanted to literally pull his hair out. Wanted to pull his hair out. The boss said he, he was going to pull his hair out. He was so frustrated. Any parents ever been there? Man, I'll tell you them kids. I'll tell you them. Pull your hair out, right? You've, you've tried everything. You're so frustrated, so tired of dealing with that situation, and you're about ready to get You just want to pull your hair out. You're so angry and frustrated. But instead of pulling his hair out, the Bible tells us, you know what he did? Instead of pulling his hair out, he fell on his knees. He fell on his knees and he began to cry out to God. He began to pray. And the more he prayed, the more people started repenting and turning in their ways and something glorious began to happen. What does all that have to do with why I'm here and what's going on in my life? I want you to know, I know you're frustrated. I know you're going through something. If you ain't going through something now, you're going to go in through something soon, right? So you better go ahead and get on your knees because... It, you're going to be right in place because there's going to be times where you're frustrated. 
in times where you don't understand, times where you're like, God, what are you doing to me? What are you doing right now in this situation? He's saying, stop being so frustrated. Stop pointing your house and pray first and get down on your knees and start giving everything to me because you've tried everything and it ain't working. I'm the only one that can do what you need in this moment. So, hey, we're going to do something different today. So, you know what we're going to do? We're going to get on our knees. And we're going to start praying. I don't need no altar call because y'all can come up anytime. Hey, we got hey, we got enough. Hey, we got a big stage. We might as well put it to use. So this morning, let's go ahead and let's start praying. Come on up. Let's pray. Father, right now, God, I, I just want to stop today, Lord, and tell you, God, Lord, I'm grateful to be here. I'm grateful, God, to have this opportunity to just let you know that, Lord, I can't do anything without you, Lord. I need you in the morning, God. I need you in the afternoon, Lord. I need you every minute of every day, God. Everything that I go through, everything that I face, Lord, everything that these people are going through, God. Lord, it's easy to come in church and put a smiley face on, God. But deep down, Lord, somebody needs to hear this today. That before you do anything, before you try to jump to your own solution, before you try to figure it all out, just get on your knees and pray and begin to talk to God and say, God, what is it that you want me to do? God, how can I serve you today? God, how can I be a blessing to you today? God, I need I need a breakthrough in this area. God, I need a breakthrough in that area. But God, I want to keep going. But how can I keep going? You can keep going by getting on your knees and praying. God, I pray for every family that's represented here. And God, the enemy wants nothing more than to destroy families. And so God, I speak blessing over every person in that family, God. I pray, Lord, in the name of Jesus for unity like no other, Lord, not only in this church, but in general, with this, with people around us, with the society, God. With, with what we're living in today, God, I pray, Lord, that we would love one another. I pray, Lord, for every, every gate that we're looking at, God. Everything that the enemy is telling us is not going to work out. Why are you trying? Why are you doing this? Because I'm, I'm not, it's not happening yet. I don't see anything happening. I want you to know you just keep praying. God, we want to we wanna pray, Lord. Lord, we want to we wanna tell you all about it. God, sometimes it might just take two minutes, and sometimes, God, it might take three hours. But, God, we want you to know everything. We want you to know that, Lord, we can't fight the battle on our own. We can't do it on our own. We can't figure it out. God, we've got to pray first. Lord, I pray for the church, God. And I pray that we would become a church that would pray first. Above all, we would pray first. Everything that's happened in our life, every person here that has children, God, we lift them up to you, Lord, before they go to school, God. Pray over them, God. Pray for them. Day in, day out, regardless how old they are, pray for them. When they get out of the house, pray for them. When they have their own kids, pray. Pray, 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 pray. God, we want to see breakthroughs. We want to see breakthroughs. God, we want miracles to happen, Lord, in our life and in this church. God, we want to be a church that's obedient to you, that whatever your will is, God, that's what we want. We don't have to do it like everybody else, God. We just want to do it like you want us to do it. And so, God, move and work and help us to get on our knees more and pray first. In Jesus' name, and everybody said, amen. amen.